I saw several folks having to look at the songbook a few times along the way, and that's always encouraging and a beautiful song. And uh, he is a wonderful Lord tonight. Acts chapter number 27 tonight. We have been studying through the book of Acts on Sunday evening for some time. If I have counted correctly, this is message number 59 that I have preached out of the book of Acts. Uh, the Acts of the Holy Spirit in the early church. Uh, it is a picture, a history of the first century church and uh, gives us insight into what the Lord desires for His church to be and for His people to be. Our text here this evening in Acts 27 deals with some of the most difficult days, uh, in fact, the last days of the, in the life of the Apostle Paul. Uh, if you've been here along the way, if you've studied the book of Acts, and you know that from the latter part of Acts 21, Paul has been under arrest, uh, first of all, in the hands of uh, that crowd of, of uh, vicious uh, Jews who were trying to kill him in Jerusalem as he has gone back to report to them about the good grace of God and what the Lord has done in saving souls as he has uh, carried the gospel message to the Gentile world. And as a result of that, they were inflamed, uh, they were incensed, and uh, uh, Paul was almost killed. And as a result of that, he was taken in hand by the captain of the guard, uh, the Roman uh, uh, military there in Jerusalem, and uh, held by them. And then uh, because of the fear that, uh, that those Jews were going to kill him, uh, then the captain of the guard moved him to Caesarea. Uh, during the time he in, was in Caesarea, he stood before Felix, he stood before Festus, he stood before King Agrippa and uh, gave testimony, bore testimony each time to his faith in the Lord. Notice verse number 32 in, in chapter 26, kind of uh, gives us a setting for this 27th chapter. Then said Agrippa, this is King Agrippa now, he and Festus are having a, con a conversation and he makes this statement about Paul. This man might have been at liberty. That, that probably was not going to be because the, uh, uh, that crowd of incensed Jews in Jerusalem just were not going to allow that to happen. But he makes this statement. This man might have been at, set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. If you remember, Paul as a Roman citizen uh, had made appeal for his trial, the accusations brought against him to be heard by the court of Rome before Caesar. And so now with all that they have done and, and no relief as far as uh, Paul's case is concerned, they're going to transfer him. He's going to be carried to Rome. And here in Acts 27, he's on the final leg of his earthly journey. He's on a ship. They put him on a ship bound for Rome. And in our text uh, here in chapter 27, Paul, is, uh, his group is traveling uh, by ship and they're caught in a very tempestuous wind and storm. In fact, it's a very serious thing that threatened the lives of everybody that was on board. Earlier, Paul had urged uh, those on board with him to delay their uh, travel until a more suitable time. Uh, the captain of the ship didn't agree with that. He thought he knew more than the man of God knew, and, and so he wouldn't agree to that. Paul realized that these were difficult times to be sailing because of the fierceness of, of the weather that could come, and so he urged them not to, but they, they didn't listen to him. They refused, and as a result, things are in quite a mess. And as we read this chapter, their lives are in grave danger. Look down at verse number 14. We'll begin our reading there and read down through verse number 25. Verse 14, uh, the Bible says, But not long after there arose, not long after what? Not long after they refused Paul's advice. Not long after they decided they were going to do what they could do. Not long after there arose against it, the ship, a tempestuous wind called Eurycliden. That word means raging storm from the east. And, by, and the Bible says, And when the ship was caught and could not bear up to the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the sheep, ship. 
and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, strike sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth. After a long period of time when he was out of their presence, the Bible says Paul stood before them in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Here's my text. For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Underline those words in your Bible. For I believe God. I want us to spend some time looking at that in the context of the scripture tonight. Father, thank you for being here and thank you for the assembling of the people of God Thank you for the songs that we've been able to sing and the encouragement to our hearts. Thank you for the prayers that we've been able to pray together for our people and for each other. Thank you for this blessed book, the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for the good day in our life when you brought us to a place where we understood that this is the Word of God, that it is without error, that it, is, uh, uh, that it has not changed. And, and uh, uh, Lord, what, what a blessing to our hearts and our lives the truth of this book is. I pray now, make it real to our hearts. Make, make the things that we'll look at here tonight real to each of our hearts and may they bring a blessing and an encouragement to each heart and each life here this evening. Help that one struggling with spiritual need in their life, whether it's to be saved, whether it's a Christian to uh, take a further step with God and, and, and be obedient to you, whatever it might be, help us, Lord, to be obedient to you as you speak to our hearts tonight. We'll praise you and thank you for what you do. In Jesus' precious name we pray and ask. Paul is on a ship. Uh, he's still a prisoner. He's headed to Rome. He's going to be standing before Caesar. And of course, we know according to history, the Bible doesn't tell us in the book of Acts, but according to history, all of this is going to end uh, after Paul has had opportunity time and again to share Christ. And only God knows how many of the Roman soldiers he won to the Lord during that time. But it's all going to end with Paul literally giving his life because of his faith in Christ. Now, you and I this evening are not on a ship headed to Rome to stand trial. Thank the Lord for that. Aren't you thankful for the freedom that we have tonight? Thank the Lord for that. We all not take, we all not take that for granted. Our liberty begins in the Lord Jesus Christ, but he's blessed us in America with liberty, and we ought never to take that for granted. But having said that, let me say this. We all are on a journey through the sea of life. Every one of us are on a course through this world. And we are on the sea of life. At times, the sea is calm. At times, our journey is enjoyable. At times, things are calm and everything is going well. But then there are seasons when the waves are rough and we're forced to sail within the storms that come on the sea of life. In the midst of that, we need the faith that Paul possessed when we face those difficult seasons in our lives. And they're going to come. I, a young or old, uh, a teenager, a senior, it makes no difference where you are in life. There are going to be those seasons that come in our life when our faith is going to be tested and when we're going to need faith like the faith that Paul possessed in his life. It is a fact that life is never easy. But as God's children, we are promised safe passage to the other side. If you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, I can promise you 
safe passage to the other side. You are going to make it to the other side. There's not anything that can keep you from arriving safely in the haven of heaven. That's a promised thing in the Word of God. Maintaining our faith in the Lord is something that is essential in our lives to having victory here for our lives being a testimony to those around us, for us being able uh, to, uh, to look at our lives and, and, and have some sense of success as far as our Christian lives are concerned. I want us to take just a few moments this evening and examine the details that we find in our text here as we consider Paul's tremendous statement down in verse 25, for I believe God. What was he going through? What was he facing in his life when he makes this statement? Well, look with me first of all at the fierceness of, of, of Paul's storm here. Look, look in verse number 20. The Bible says, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. The storm that Paul is in, the storm that these men are in, that they have encountered, well, was not just a passing gale. It wasn't just a, uh, uh, an insignificant uh, breeze that was blowing through. It was a strong tempest. It was a contrary wind. In other words, the wind was blowing the, the wrong way to carry them to where they needed to be. And that's always a difficult situation when you're, when you're sailing on the sea uh, using a sailboat. And often in life we face those contrary winds, things that, uh, things that would hinder us in our progress moving ahead. Notice the effects that uh, these contrary winds had on them. First of all, they were disoriented. Look at the first part of the verse. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared. Now you understand that in Paul's day, ships had no global positioning systems. They navigated with the help of the sun and the stars. The sun, the stars, gave them their navigation points to make their trips. And the Bible tells us here that for many days, this storm had raged, and as a result of that, they were unable to see the, the heavenly bodies, the sun, the, the stars, uh, to attain direction, for them to be able to gather the direction that they needed to go. They were in the midst of a great storm, and they had no idea where they were. They had no idea where they were headed. Everything was darkness around them as far as, uh, as far as what they could see. And so they were disoriented. I can tell you tonight uh, in this voyage on the sea of life that you and I are on, uh, there are times in our lives when that kind of a storm may not be a physical storm like they were in. Maybe a, may, may a, uh, a storm of, of, of physical need in your life. Maybe a storm of financial need in your life. May, maybe a problem in your relationship with someone. Maybe a problem on the job that, that is so overwhelming. Uh, and uh, it, it is so heavy, it is so difficult that you can't see which way to go. You, you're trying to move the direction you ought to go, but, but you, you're disoriented. You just cannot see which way to go. It's easy for even the strongest Christian to become disoriented in life's journey as they face the fierce storms of life. One, one of the things that I, I, I've tried to encourage people through the years, Christian people through the years, don't, don't try to project a, an image of being a super Christian to others around you. I have never met a super Christian. Hello? I, 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 listen, I've known some of the greatest Christians, uh, that, as far as I'm concerned, that, I've, that, 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 that you could ever hope to meet, but I can promise you they had the same battles in life that I have. And if we're not careful, we'll, we'll try to project that super image of Christianity to others, and, and in doing that, we defeat them. We, we discourage them because they think, I must not be anything of a Christian at all. But because, look at them, they don't seem to have any trouble at all. If you could only know what's going on behind the scenes in their life. It's so important, if we're going to maintain proper direction, 
That we do one thing in our Christian lives, and that's to keep our eyes on the sun, S-O-N, the Lord Jesus Christ. When the storm clouds cover our path, when we lose our focus, we're in danger of getting off course. We're in danger of getting into hazardous waters that, that are going to cause us difficulty, even cause shipwreck in our lives if we're not careful. In the midst of that, we need to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus. You say, but how do you do that, preacher? How do you do that when, when you're being battered this way and that way in the storms of life? Well, listen to me. God's given you a compass in this life. And it's right here in the Word of God. You can't keep your eyes on the sun, S-O-N, unless you spend time in His Word. So first of all, it was a fierce storm, a ferocious storm that caused them to become disoriented. Secondly, you look here in this verse, verse 20, not only were they disoriented, but they were discouraged. Look at the verse again. The Bible says, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Notice the, the plurality of the words in this verse. We. Now who's writing this? Who, who wrote the book of Acts? Well, you say it's God's word. I understand that, but God had a human author. Dr. Luke is writing this. L Luke is, is traveling with the apostle Paul, and, and uh, he is being used of the Lord to record all of this. And so in the midst of, of this fierce storm, Luke makes an admission that, that all hope of survival seemed gone. All hope that we should be saved, that, that those on board the ship should be saved. They were beginning to resign themselves to defeat. That they were beginning to accept defeat in their lives, feeling as though this is it, we're going to perish at sea. That's exactly the frame of mind that the enemy wants every believer to possess. We talked about uh, we talked about Satan's attack on Job this morning and uh, how he attacked Job in so many ways. And one of the ways he attacked Job was in his flesh. He came with that, he came with that dreaded disease that he hit him with. And, and uh, uh, in the midst of, of all of that, the devil is trying to get our minds off the Lord and on other things and on our problems rather than focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, God doesn't want you to be there. Satan wants to divert our focus from the Lord to the storm or the storms in our life, the storms we face. We, we can't get our eyes off the Lord. Listen, he, he, he is our lifesaver in this world. He, uh, and, and if we're going to finish the voyage with, with victory in our lives, we're going to have to keep our eyes on him. Satan seeks to, to have us believe we'll never survive the adversity that we're facing. That, that there's no use to press on. We might as well give up. Uh, trouble comes and we fail. Uh, how many of you have failed in your life? Be honest with God and honest with say every one of us in this room. If you're a Christian, I don't care where you are in life. You have failed the Lord somewhere along the way. But that doesn't have to be the end of, the, uh, of this thing. The devil will try to tempt you into believing that it is, that there's no use to press on. He wants us to abandon our efforts and, and, and cease serving the Lord. He wants us to give up on God. I, I remember, and I'll use a personal illustration. You'll forgive me for this. But I, I remember uh, just a few days after uh, all of this thing started with Christy, I had a preacher call me. And he said, uh, have you resigned your church? And I said, resign my church? Why would I resign my church but because of this? They haven't sent me to prison. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, I, I haven't done anything in all this. But, but what, he was, what he was alluding to was the fact that the storm has come. And this is where a lot of people fail God. This is where a lot of people stop. This is where a lot of people get discouraged and quit on God. When the storm comes, in, in the ferociousness, the fierceness of that storm, they, they quit on God. May, may God help us to resist the urge to give up. But in the midst of the storm, no matter what's going on, as a child of God, in the midst of the storm, to look up to the Lord by faith, and continue on our journey. We're on a journey from, from the day God saved us until he takes us home to glory. No matter how difficult it may become, well, we need to keep our eyes on the Lord. 
So first of all, as I look in the context of these verses, as Paul makes this statement uh, here, for I believe God, we see the fierceness of the storm. But I see a second thing here, not only the fierceness of the storm, but I see the fervency of their prayer. Look at verse 21. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. Now this verse reveals to us the fervency of Paul in prayer. You say it doesn't say anything about prayer. Well, where, where, where do you think Paul was when he was separated from them? They're up, on, they're up on the deck of the ship. They're down in the hole of the ship throwing things out. They're throwing everything over that can be thrown over and, and, and not destroy the, the, uh, uh, the, the safety, the framework of the ship. They, they have given up. They, they have totally given up. They, they, have just, they have told themselves, this is the end. We're all going to die. But while all of them had given up, Paul remained resilient in his prayer life. He, he, he maintained that, that, that constant relationship with God through the wonderful medium of prayer. His hope was not in the strength of that ship. His hope was not in the ability of the captain of that ship, but his hope was in the Lord. And there are a couple of things that I, that I want us to look at here. Now, first of all, their condition. Look back at verses 14 and 15. But not long, long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurycliden. Uh, reading what others say about this, they say it was somewhat like a, uh, like a, a tropical cyclone, like a, like a hurricane that hit the boat. Verse 15, when the ship was caught and could not bear up uh, into the wind and let her drive. They just turned things loose and, and, and accepted the fact that the winds caught us. Look at verses 18 and 19. And we being exceedingly tossed with the tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our hands the tackling of the ship. To fully appreciate the, the dedication of Paul, you have to understand the, the, the adverse conditions that they, they are dealing with. The storm was so intense that they had no control over it whatsoever. Uh, the, 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 the individual who was controlling the rudder, the direction of the ship, the, that ship was being thrown every direction. He could not even control the direction of the ship. The storm was so intense that they had no, no control over it at all. And so the captain, a, a seafaring captain, the captain made the decision. To, uh, all they could do was, was turn her loose and let the ship go where she wished to go. The, their path then became dictated by the storm. Well, when they released the, the control of the ship to the direction of the storm, what they were saying at that point, wherever we land, it'll be the storm that, that will determine that. As the storm continued to rage, they were forced to begin throwing everything overboard in an effort to keep the ship afloat. And as you read this, it becomes very clear that the ship and those who are on board it are in a perilous situation. It's about as bad as it can get on the sea. Now, you and I may have not faced anything like that in life, but, but we have faced uh, storms in our lives. We have faced dire situations in our lives, somewhat uh, akin to what they are facing here. We, we may have not been on a ship in the midst of the sea, but we faced a situation so desperate that it genuinely dictated our course of life, the, the actions in our life. It seemed as if our lives were spiraling out of control. I, I just can't stop this. I, I can't, can't bring it to a halt. Things are just out of my control. We're, we're simply trying at that point to hang on and, and survive the storm. And like the mariners, we may have tried to rid our lives of a lot of things. I don't know about you, but there have been some storms in my life, I confess, to, uh, ever since I could think of and... and uh, then I started confessing Janet's sins, hoping that they weren't some of those that were causing us to have difficulty and trouble. They, they were spiraling out of control. And they, they were trying to lighten the ship. You, you may have been there. You, you may have felt as if you tried everything you could and, and there appeared to be no end of the storm in sight. That's the condition that they're in here. Now notice the, the commitment here. Look at verse 21. 
But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and have gained this harm and loss. While this storm is raging above, it's apparent as you read this that Paul had been within the ship. He's been praying and seeking the Lord. How, how do you know that? Because down in verse 23, he talks about how the angel of the Lord stood by him. Everybody else may have abandoned hope. But I can tell you in the face of this, Paul had not abandoned hope. What did he do? He committed himself to fervent prayer in the midst of the storm. <laughs> the, the word abstinence here carries with it the idea of fasting. Prayer and fasting. That's not, a, that's not much of a popular word anywhere in the world today, fasting. Uh, committing yourself to fasting and prayer. But I want to tell you, it's still a biblical principle. And it's a principle that the Word of God teaches us as God's children. Paul was seeking the Lord on behalf of himself, but not only seeking God on, on his behalf, but all the others who traveled with him. Now, I'll tell you, this, this is easy preaching, but it's hard practice. Because you see, most of the time, uh, prayer is our last resort. It's not our first resort. I've had people come to me and say, Preacher, I want us to pray. I've tried everything else. And I've thought about that through the years and it shook my head. Prayer ought to be the first thing we do. When I get sick before what I'm calling, uh, what I'm getting the number to, to call the doctor's office, I ought to be on my face praying and asking God for help and healing in my life. When troubles come about my finances and I, I'm thinking, well, I'm going to have to get a second job and do this and do that. Before I do any of that, I ought to be on my face praying. When, when troubles come in my relationships with others, but before I start trying to work out all those relationships, the first place I ought to go is to God and asking God to give me grace and strength in the midst of that. We must be committed to prayer regardless of the situations that we face. You see, during storms like these, oftentimes a hurried prayer is not adequate. <laughs> Paul has been apart from this crowd. I don't know how long, but, but the Bible says a long abstinence. Now, God doesn't just put words there to fill up space. When the Bible says long, that means they haven't seen Paul in a while. Why? Because he's been somewhere on his face before God. And there are times when we must commit to long seasons of prayer. So we see the fierceness of the storm. We see the fer uh, fervency of their prayer. But then I want you to notice the faithfulness of the Lord here. Look at verses 23 and 24. Paul said, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. The Lord came to Paul in his season of prayer, and the Lord spoke to him. And the Lord made Paul aware of three things. First of all, he became aware of God's presence. Verse 23, there stood by me this night the angel of God. How long in your prayer time have you been aware of God's presence with you? Now, I'll tell you as I stand here tonight, I'll confess to you there are times when I pray that I don't sense the presence of the Lord. But I will tell you this, even whether I sense his presence or not, God's children never honestly and openly come to the Lord with a need in their life that God is not there. There are other times in my, my, my prayer time when I pray and it seems like the Lord just comes and gets right there beside me and puts his hand on my shoulder and I can sense his presence. Paul assured them that he'd been in the presence of the Lord. Boy, what a wonderful place to get. Thank God for in, in our trouble, in our difficulty, in, in our times of struggle, in our lives, when we get on our face before the Lord and he comes and makes us aware of his presence. Aren't you thankful for that tonight? While the others were fearful and hopeless, feeling that they'd been left to the mercy of the storm, Paul assures them that God was in their midst. During the turmoil of the storm, Paul had rested in the presence and in the security of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful place to be. Storms of life are a reality. They're not peculiar to God's people. They're a reality. A reality that all of us must face. They're unavoidable. They're unpreventable. 
But thank God tonight, we don't have to face those storms alone. The 